Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Frampas. I'm an associate professor of emergency medicine and anesthesiology at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm director of the Peter M. Winter Institute for Simulation Education and Research and medical director of our Advanced Paramedic Airway Program. So my start in EMS began in 1980. Uh, I joined my local hometown rescue squad in Millville, New Jersey, which, of which I'm still a life member, uh, proud to say. And uh, then uh, left uh, a couple years later to join the Navy and worked in electronics. And uh, while I was in the Navy, I ended up in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And I uh, joined there as a volunteer and worked my way up through uh, becoming a paramedic, a nationally registered paramedic. And then uh, I uh, began teaching at the local community college there. And that was sort of how I got into EMS education. The Street Medicine Society is, um, was actually, uh, the idea came together by Jim Page uh, after the death of uh, Dr. Frank Geiser. He was a very influential uh, physician in the uh, Tidewater, Virginia, that's the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area. Uh, and uh, he worked his way up from being a paramedic to being a medical director of that system. Uh, and after Frank passed away, Jim uh, gave this uh, honor uh, and uh, created this society. And what it is, uh, it's a society of physicians, all of whom uh, began on the streets uh, of EMS. And what I mean by that is uh, physicians now that work in some sort of EMS leadership, either as operational medical directors, educators, um, or in some cases tactical doctors working with EMS teams, uh, but it's all people that truly were in EMS as a career or profession at one point in time, not just simply volunteering at the local rescue squad during college. The Street Medicine Society, I think, is important, uh, has important influences in EMS because everybody in the society is in some sort of leadership position that directly affects EMS. And I think that it's good to have people who were truly out in the streets uh, for some period of time, some of us for many, many years, uh, so that as we make decisions uh, from the medical director side of the house, we truly can get a feeling for and understand how those decisions are disseminated. Are they going to work? Are they not? going to work based on our experience from the field. So here uh, at EMS Today in Baltimore, um, we uh, did a session, I did a session uh, with Jeff Miller from the University of Miami, uh, and we did one called Simulating Work, uh, and uh, basically it was uh, a session that helped people understand uh, that simulation can be just more than a fun educational tool that we can actually start doing assessment of competence. We spent a lot of time uh, talking about competence. The audience was very engaged and interacted with us uh, quite a bit on that area of competence. People are spending a lot of money investing in simulation and simulation-based programs. And what we're trying to do, based on the experience that we have from my institute and at the University of Pittsburgh and the Gordon Center's institute at the University of Miami, is we're trying to help people use that expensive equipment and expensive methodology in much more efficient and effective ways. Price always comes up when you're talking about the cost of the simulators uh, and, your co and the cost of the simulation program. Some advice that I would have are uh, it's okay to start small. You don't have to wait until you have a whole truckload of equipment delivered to start your simulation program. The next piece of advice is really make sure that you're analyzing the cost uh, because a lot of people think the simulators are expensive, but the price of the simulators is really fractional compared to the cost of running a simulation program. The support staff that you need, the instructors need to be trained differently, uh, and they need to uh, sort of the whole program needs to keep going and that's the real cost of simulation. The last thing I would say is you got to do it. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, simulation is not a sideshow anymore. It's not an extra part of medicine. It's, it's, it's being woven into the fabric of, of healthcare. Uh, and we, have, we know that multiple choice testing uh, is, is a great tool for testing knowledge uh, and, and assessing that level of competence. But we also know that when we bring people into simulation, uh, it helps us analyze their decision-making capabilities on the fly, and that's what we really need to do to push the envelope of, of patient care. I think the take-home message that we gave to our uh, session participants here at EMS Today in Baltimore uh, was that this, the simulator can be used for a variety of different things. It can be a fun educational tool, which is great because it's engaging for the students, but we wanted to push the envelope and have these educators start realizing that they have the investment in simulation and that they should use it as an educational tool to measure, uh, measure the uh, efficiency of the education, measure the competence of the provider, measure the competence of a team of providers.